Jesus. Go with your purpose, go with your one and two. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I've come to realize that there are predominantly five ways in which you can be successful. Um, five types of success. And uh, maybe you could say five types or five different sources of success. Um, let me just shock you with the first one. As you navigate your way into 2022, I want you to know that uh, Satan can make you successful as well. And a lot of people are not aware of that. And I've, I've realized that uh, <laughs> not everything that glitters is gold, uh, yeah. beloved. So in 2022, I beseech you by the message of the Lord to discern your support. Discern everyone who comes alongside you to help your ambition and endeavors. Because Satan is always wanting to help in, in better cause. You know, I was looking at uh, this issue in Matthew 4, we have alluded to this many a times, beloved, verses 8 and 9, when he says to Jesus audaciously, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world and their glory. That's audacious. If you can approach the King of Kings, the Son of the Living God, and say to him, if you will bow down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of the earth. The question is, how many people, including believers, including men and women of God, have been given the same offer? That's the question we need to ask. How many people are looking successful riding on the support of the enemy? And don't take this issue for granted, beloved, and, and I beseech you by the message of the Lord, don't don't, don't dare take this issue for granted. It's a very important issue because there are people who are so desperate for success they will take any help that comes along the way. The sad story we see in the book of Revelation chapter 18, verse 3, where the Bible says, For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and look at this one. The merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of a luxurious living. So this is the hallowed. This is Babylon, the great. Because of all the luxury that she has, she has given to the merchants of the earth, the kings of the earth, and the Bible says they have made themselves rich because of her riches. So not all riches come from God. And then the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 30, warships from western coastlands will scare him off. That's the Antichrist, the false messiah that is to come. And who will withdraw and return home. By the way, the coming of the Antichrist will not be without wars. He will not just peacefully rise to power. There will be opposition to him. But he will vent his anger against the people of the Holy Covenant. And he will reward those who forsake the covenant. In other words, when the Antichrist rises to power, he will enrich those that break the covenant with God. You need to understand that during this time when the church is taken to heaven, after the rapture of the church, there will be a moment of reckoning that indeed Jesus is Lord. When we disappear, we will not disappear quietly. There will be discussions. There will be talks. 
how come they've disappeared? And many people will begin to realize that indeed, Jesus is Lord. And many will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and that when that begins to happen, beloved, the Antichrist would be furious. And then all those that are willing to forsake Jesus, the Bible says he will reward them handsomely. Amen. Sure. So there are people during the time of tribulation who will be rich because of the offers from the false Messiah. Yeah. So that is why I'm saying there are successful people who are powered by Satan. Who are sponsored by Satan. And probably, let us not pretend that we don't know these things because we, 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 we grew up in an African culture. Uh, the whole concept of Twala. Uh, there are people who have died for businesses to thrive. There are people who have been killed for some people to be successful financially. And that is satanic, beloved. So there are success stories that are driven by Satan himself. And that is why I want us to be very clear that we are not desperate for success to a point that every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes along to support us, we will go for that. No. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Please resolve that. And I've said many times that many of the things that the enemy is offering you are actually yours. It's just that the enemy wants you to receive those things in a twisted manner. They belong to you. You don't have to go for his method. Praise the name of Jesus. That is one form of what appears like success. The second interesting type of success is a success in the realm of common blessings. Common blessings. These are kind of blessings that everyone enjoys, born again or not born again. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and verse, uh, verse 45 as well, it says, But I tell you, you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Hallelujah. So, we all benefit from the reign of God, whether we are saints or sinners. Yes. Yeah. In actual fact, a sinner who can harness common blessings very well can be more successful than a believer. Yes. Yeah. Let me say that again. A sinner who can harness common blessings well will do greater things than most believers. In actual fact, it does not even take Jesus to be successful. Because in the expansiveness of his common blessings, there are people who can leverage those blessings very well. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And, and that is why again in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, it say, this is what the, the wise man says. He says, I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Sinners and saints. Time and chance happen to everyone. That is why sometimes when you look around, you realize that most success stories of our time, the greatest innovations of our generation are not done by believers. If you go to the Silicon Valley, that is Babylon at its best. Not too many believers there when it comes to innovation, when it comes to technologies that uh, are, are, are yielding billions and billions, uh, you, won't, you won't see a lot of believers there. The reality is that sometimes, beloved, it, it, it becomes a bit of a struggle. Uh, sometimes I, 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 I struggle even with this issue. How come non-believers sometimes see opportunities that believers don't see? You know? Because the Bible says time and chance happen to all of us. But some people can, can maximize opportunity more than others. And there's something that we need to pray about. There's something that we need to introspect ourselves on. Hallelujah. Amen. The third 
source of success is diligence and wisdom. Mm. Diligence and wisdom. And again, this is something that both sinners and saints must acknowledge. Where there is hard work, there will be diligence. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to also appreciate, beloved, that the principle of sowing and reaping applies here. In Genesis 8, verse 22, the Bible says, as long as there's been seed time, there will be harvest. Yes. As long as the earth endures, when the seed has gone to the ground, there will be harvest. Yes. And that's a, a common principle. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So if people work hard and sow, there will see results. Yes. Irrespective of whether they are sinners or saints. Yes. And you need to get this right because many of us are pointing a finger at God and we're saying, Lord, how come every year I struggle? The question is, how diligent are you? Yes. And I've realized that salvation does not exempt you from diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation does not exonerate you from hard work. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Actually, this is what the Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Diligent hands will rule again yes. whether they belong to saints or sinners. Hands, hands that are diligent yes. will rule. But the Bible says, laziness ends in forced labor. Yeah. Many of us are in slavery because of laziness. Yeah. And that is why many times there are scenarios where non believers are ruling hard yeah. over us. Yeah. Why? Because many of them have worked hard. Yeah. Sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I challenge you in 2022, don't just pray, work hard. Yes. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Don't just pray. Actually, I do believe that a prayerful person who is working hard has a greater advantage than a prayerless hard worker. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. A prayerful hard worker has greater advantage than a prayerless hard worker. Yes. Amen. Yes. So work and pray, work and pray. That's a principle. So diligent and, and diligence and wisdom are great sources of breakthroughs and success. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's another one. Mercy and grace. That's another success, another success source. Mercy and grace. This refers to blessings that we don't deserve. Amen. 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 Hey, because God is merciful. God is loving. His mercy endures forever. And He steps in in the midst of our laziness. He steps in in the midst of our sinfulness. He steps in and He blesses us. That is why in Lamentations chapter 3, Verses 22 and 23. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. His mercies are new every morning. And, uh, and, and that is why, beloved, I want you to understand that God is loving. Yes. God is gracious. In actual fact, many of us are in this realm. When you talk about being blessed, we are in the realm of his mercy and grace. Yes. Oh yeah, you look around, you know, I don't deserve this. Yes. I, I don't deserve this. Praise the name of Jesus. And then this, this is a realm, beloved, where we receive rewards from God that are unmerited. In other words, there are no grounds for you to receive what you have received. But God, out of His mercy, has just released them. Praise the name of Jesus. See, if you read Psalm 136, verses 1 to 26, it is a, a detailed, poetic account. Of God's enduring mercy. His mercy endures forever. That's the repeated phrase in the text psalm. His mercy endures forever. He heals us. His mercy endures forever. He, 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 forever. he delivers us and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I do believe that uh, this is the dimension that many of us are living in. The dimension of grace and mercy. I mean, if you have done a bad job in preparing for your exam, but you passed. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? And when the results come out, you start blushing. 
because you know what he did. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Amen. Let me talk about the fifth source of blessings, which is going to be my focus for this morning. I want to talk about uncommon blessings. Uncommon blessings. These are blessings that are merited. Meritorious rewards. These are blessings that you deserve. <laughs> now, this will be a shocker to your system. Because in the dispensation of grace, we hardly hear about this. In the current grace narrative, people will hardly talk about blessings that a believer deserves. When God deals with you based on merits. Hallelujah. And now, I want to push you in 2022 and beyond to a place where you are not just enjoying common blessings. Praise the Lord. Because common is not your destiny. Hallelujah. I want you to come to a place where you will give testimonies that non-believers can give. Now, you see, there's a dimension where you will give testimonies that even disobedient believers amongst you will never dare to give. This is, this is a place where very few get to. Hallelujah. And my prayer for you is that before the rapture of the church, that's the dimension you must step into. Hallelujah. Before you die, please don't die with common things. Praise the Lord. May you experience the extraordinary. Because you see, common is not exactly, it, it is not exactly in alignment with your identity. Let me remind you that you are a peculiar nation. You are a people chosen by God. You are royalty. You are royal priesthood. You cannot remain in the dimension of the common. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. When the sun rises, it's upon both sinners and saints. When it rains, it rains upon both sinners and saints. Go higher. Praise the name of Jesus. Go higher. Now, these things are very unfamiliar to us. Because the grace narrative, especially in modern day theology, is you know you 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 have absolutely no obligation. There is even no need for you to place yourself in a place of marriage, you know, because everything happens by grace. Everything is by God's mercy. Now today I want to talk about grace in the context of you walking in obedience, so that you come to a place of merits. Hallelujah. Everything is by grace, hear me and hear me well. But I want to understand that grace is not just about unmerited favor. Now let's correct that. You see, if you want to dig deep into this whole thing of grace, grace is not only about unmerited things. Grace can help you to have merits. <laughs> and that is, this is something that we have never tapped into. As the body of Christ, because every time unmerited favor, unmerited favor. No, 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 no. Grace, which is divine enablement, can actually push you to a place of merit, to a place where you deserve. <laughs> Grace can catapult you, the praise God, to a place where there are grounds for good things to happen to you. Hallelujah. Now, that's the narrative of grace I want us to pursue in 2022. Not just always, I don't deserve, I don't deserve, I don't deserve, I don't deserve. No, 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 no. That's common, that's common. Everybody's undeserving. Everybody's undeserving. But there is a peculiar nation. There are people chosen by God who are deserving. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you scriptures that many of us have never read, most likely. Um... <laughs> But let me just start with the one that you have read. But maybe you have ever looked this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 to 6. It says, if you fully obey, the Lord your God 
and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God, yes, will set you above all nations of the world. Ah, the reason why we are under and not above is because of our disobedience. Yes. Hallelujah. The reason why we are under is because we have settled for the common. We did not venture into the uncommon. Mom said was leading prayer. I was very excited, Mom said, when you were leading prayer. Talking about the, the price we need to pay for obedience. Because obedience is not cheap. Praise the name of Jesus. And that's what we want to talk about today. Obedience is not cheap. Hallelujah. The reason why in the realm of uncommon blessings, there are very few people you will find there. It's because obedience is not cheap. And very few are willing to pay the price. It says you will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and your bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and wherever you and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Many of us will be probably honest enough to say we have not yet seen this in our lives. Many of us will probably say, Yazutin, sometimes I see the opposite of this. Sometimes whatever I do goes wrong. Sometimes wherever I go, things just go wrong. And that is not consistent with scripture. Praise the name of Jesus. It's the, the reason why that is happening is because we are in the realm of the common. If you fully obey the Lord your God, and you carefully keep all his commands, the Bible says he will bless you. You are blessed going in and you are blessed coming out. Praise the Lord Jesus. Whatever you touch, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You, you don't follow blessings, but blessings follow you. It's almost like a, the, the blessing of the Lord is waiting for you to do something before it manifests in that thing. Praise the name of Jesus. The blessing is always beside you asking, what are you touching? What are you touching? What are you touching? We want to manifest in what you're touching. Where are you going? Wherever you are going, we want to manifest there. Hallelujah. Not, there are not too many people like that. There are not too many people like that. What about you? How about you? Come on, what about you? Don't look at that. What's Hallelujah. May people chase after you because people know there is favor upon you. Praise the name of Jesus. Even relatives that have been avoiding you, I pray in Jesus' name that you draw them like a magnet. Because you are blessed going in and you're blessed coming out. Praise the Lord. This is a passage that many of us have not noticed. <laughs> and it sounds a bit audacious and arrogant. But I want us to deal with it this morning. Second Samuel chapter 22, verses 21 to 25. <laughs> Please bear with this passage because it's not a familiar language. We are a very spoiled generation. Unmerited, unmerited. I don't deserve, I don't deserve. No. <laughs> Listen to David. The Lord has dealt with me mm. according to my righteousness. Aha, I see my up. I will pick the I will message. The Lord has mm. dealt with me according to my righteousness. Aha. So the Lord can deal with a believer according to his or her righteousness. I would, mm. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the one who is so good, he is unmerited. Sing and he is unmerited. Praise the name of Jesus. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Sizo Hamba, Sizo Hamba, Bazalan. You have been staying in the common dimension for too long. Praise the Lord. And, and I understand that this is very, it's foreign to your system. Praise the Lord. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. Read on, man. According to the cleanness of my hands, mm. he has rewarded me. Aha. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. 
In other words, I had a chance to kill Saul, but I did not kill him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I had a chance to finish him off, but I heard the word from God saying, touch not the anointed of the Lord. And I refrained. Praise the Lord. By the way, he penned down this psalm after he had been chased by Saul and he had overcome the Philistines. And then he, he reflects and says, wow, the Lord has dealt with me according to the cleanness of my hands. And he, was, he has rewarded me according to my righteousness. Please read on now. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am not guilty of turning from my God. Mm -hmm. All his laws are before me. Yep. I have not turned away from his decrees. Mm -hmm. I have been blameless before him mm -hmm. and have kept myself from sin. Now, I want to assure you right here, because many of you probably are cringing right now. The grace of God can help you come to a place where you obey God fully. Praise the Lord. This cannot be achieved by human strength. Now, this is where grace comes in. No, 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 no. We, we, we don't just want grace for unmerited things. We want grace to help us to have credits. Praise the Lord Jesus. Grace can make you credited. Hallelujah. Grace can help you have marriage. Grounds for God's favor. Grounds for his blessings. Grounds for victory stories. Praise the name of Jesus. So, please, when, when David says, I, I, I've obeyed his commands. I've not been guilty of rebellion against his name. Praise the name of Jesus. That can never be achieved by human strength. That can only be achieved by grace. Says one of one. That's where grace comes in. So fear not. Every believer who dares to say, Father, I believe in you for your grace to manifest in my life. Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. Please read on more. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. Hallelujah. According to the cleanness, to my cleanness in his son. Hallelujah. I'm pushing you into this dimension in 2022. In Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5, it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Praise the name of Jesus. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? It is the one who has clean hands, a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Now listen to this. The person with clean hands, the person with a pure heart, the person who does not trust in an idol, the person who does not swear by false gods, he will receive the blessing from the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. He will receive vindication from God, their Savior. So in other words, this ascension is a process of exclusion. Because only the few can go there. Praise the Lord. So that is why now I want to talk about ascending the holy hill where we get into the dimension of the uncommon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because at the top, at, at the foot of the mountain, there are common blessings there. Praise the Lord. Everyone, everyone is receiving at the foot of the mountain. But only those who ascend get to a point where they receive the uncommon. Hallelujah. Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Uh-huh. So in other words, there is a place where God can find you irresistible. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a place where God has no choice but to release good things upon you. There, there is a place, beloved, where God cannot withhold things from you. Hallelujah. Why? Because you are trustworthy. I want, I want to touch on what Mount said was praying on this morning. That there is a place of maturation where you are trusted with things. Uh, at this point, let me just highlight, let me just go ahead of my message. God will not release things to people who are immature. Because you will use the very things that God is releasing to you to shame his name. Hallelujah. Most believers live in the dimension of common blessings. Because they are not willing to pay the price of obedience. Amen. And it is for this reason again that I want to talk about just practical application of this. 
And I want you to see this in the nation of Israel, especially when they were in the wilderness. How this played out, this principle of uncommon blessings. How it played out when they were in the wilderness. In the wilderness, manna represented common blessings, yes? Because everybody was receiving manna. Everyone. Everyone within the nation of Israel, they were receiving manna. Whether obedient or disobedient, they were all receiving manna. But there came a point where they became nomadic shepherds in the wilderness. They were moving from place to place in the wilderness and they were tending the flock and they were taking care of their animals. Now notice something. Amongst them, some actually were able to grow their flock exponentially. Amongst them. Why? Because some were working hard and they had skills of nurturing their flock. And this is the tribe of Gad and Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh. That is why even when they were about to cross the river Jordan, they requested that they will settle on the eastern side of Jordan. Why? Because their flock was just too much. Diligence and practical wisdom was able to help the tribes of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and the tribe of Manasseh to grow their flock. Hard work and diligence. But there was also a time when they received quail, bad meat. They were tired of manna. They wanted meat. So we find them receiving meat. Exodus chapter 16 from God. You can say chicken, praise God. Just, just to contextualize it, you know. Uh, 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 in our in our modern day generation, so they they, 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 were, they enjoyed chicken, yeah. but I, I love what happens here. They received chicken bazalwane when they were murmuring and complaining. They were grumbling before Moses. Fifteen days post Egypt, it had been fifteen days, <laughs> fifteen days of veggies and fruit. Fifteen days. <laughs> no, 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 for 40 years, God is saying to these people, you are a rebellious generation. Anyone that is 20 years and older will never enter the promised land. Only Joshua and Caleb will. Of more than 3 million that left Egypt, more than 3 million, only Joshua and Caleb was able to enter the land of promise. Why? That was an uncommon blessing. Hallelujah. Uncommon. Now this is profound. You see, three million is a lot of people to have only two enter the land of promise. Now this is why I'm worried about these statistics again. Because my, my conviction as your pastor is to push you into a place of uncommon blessings. But sometimes I ask myself, how many Joshua's and Caleb's do we have in the house? Now listen to this, beloved. The, 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 we have to read this one in the book of Numbers 14, verses 29 to 30. Numbers chapter 14. Let me just quickly read. Numbers 14, verses 29 to 30. In the wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years and older, who has counted in the census, who has grumbled against me. Maybe let me just pause there. By the way, even when God blesses you, when you grumble, his mercy, his grace. Please be careful, you could be compromising your access to uncommon blessings. So many, of, many, many believers actually say, listen, why are you, why are you so concerned about my disobedience when God is blessing me? Because I'm, I'm blessed in spite of my disobedience. But listen, just because you are receiving chicken in your disobedience, you are not aware that you are actually, through your disobedience, you are chipping away from your inheritance in Canaan. Yeah. 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 Now, I want you to see the short-sightedness of people enjoying chicken when they are losing Canaan. <laughs> so, 
it is important that you don't settle for chicken when your Canaan is being lost. Praise the Lord. So they grumbled and chicken came. Pastor Betai said, right. Say right, say right. What is he doing? God is releasing. It's, it's releasing quail upon us. Men are still falling on us in spite of our disobedience. Say right, say right. But they were not aware that Canaan was drifting away from them. Be careful of living in the today only without a perspective of the future. President of Jesus. I'm trying to ensure that even if you probably, maybe you might want to sacrifice your cravings for chicken for the sake of honing in into your Canaan. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to lock into your Canaan. Hallelujah. Because there are bigger things than chicken. Praise the Lord. And this is why even during this principle, this principle will help you even during this, this time of prayer and fasting. Yeah, there, there are bigger things than the delicacies, uh, praise the Lord, that you could be enjoying this week. Hallelujah. There are things we are trying to lock into. Says Anna Batalia, bigger things. Therefore, I can sacrifice my chicken moments. Hallelujah. That's how we fast. Now listen to this. It says, no one will enter the land I saw with uplifted hand to make your home except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Only two people out of three million. The issue I want you to grasp is this. Sometimes God will forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. But you cannot reverse the fact that you are not going to enter the land of Caleb. Oh. And this is where a lot of people misunderstand grace. <laughs> and that's correct. Because unfortunately, sometimes we as preachers, we, we, we affirm you the wrong way. God is gracious. Don't worry, child of God. God is gracious. And yet you are losing your inheritance. It's just that you have not seen into your future. You don't know how much you have lost in your future, but you are settling for our false affirmation today. Listen to this passage. Listen to this. In the book of Numbers 14 verses 20 to 24. Let me read. Numbers 14 verses 20 to 24. It says the Lord replied, hmm, listen to this. I have forgiven them as you have asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I've performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times. Not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. Yes, I forgive you, but you are not going to have your inheritance. You are only abusing grace. When you abuse the grace, and you think you're getting away with things. When in actual fact your Canaan is running away from you. It is drifting away from you. That is why, you know, strictly speaking, there is no such a thing as abuse of grace. Because there are things you are losing. You, you, you mess up, you mess up. Oh, God is gracious. Forgive me, Lord. I forgive you. Mess up, mess up. Same thing. Mess up, mess up. Lord, forgive me. I forgive you. Again, you do the same, same thing again and again and again. And then you look up and say, Lord, <laughs> you've been very kind to me. Uh, give me my inheritance. And no, you can't have it. All this time, going back and backwards and forwards, all this time, all this time, asking for forgiveness, repeating the same thing, you were chipping away from your inheritance. Hallelujah. This is what it says. It says, none of them will ever see the land of promise no one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. Uh -huh. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, I love that. I pray that we may have a different spirit in 2022. Hallelujah. May, may we be met. Because here's another thing. Even if you persistently ask God for forgiveness, He knows your spirit. He knows your spirit. 
He knows that you will go back to what you have been doing. Praise the Lord. That is why I do believe that it's not that God was, was being nasty to these people. He knows that they were, he, he knew that they were actually asking for forgiveness for the very things that they were going to repeat. They were going to repeat the very same things. That is why he says there is absolutely no point in giving them their inheritance. But Caleb has a different spirit. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord <laughs> may say of you, Hey, but but Dwanwe has a different spirit. Uh, uh, but Menzi has a different spirit. In the midst of disobedient people, Zepi has a different spirit. Hallelujah. I would love the Lord to say that of me. In a world that is defiant against him. In a world that is rebellious against him. But Simoniso has a different spirit. Hallelujah. No, we're pressing into the uncommon. Hallelujah. And then he says... Be, because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and he follows me wholeheartedly. Can I just highlight at this point that this is not a reference to perfect people. Hmm. I keep assuring you on this issue. This is not a reference to perfect people. This is about the posture of your heart. This is about your disposition. <laughs> Praise God. This is about the heart that says, Father, I want to obey you all the time. I may not always get it 100%, but my posture is that of obedience to you. I have no tinge of rebellion in my heart. Hallelujah. If ever I do something that displeases you, it must be a mistake. My natural proclivity is to obey you. Praise the name of Jesus. I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it praise the lord and i want to talk more about this thing beloved so that you you understand that we cannot play with grace yes. in 2022 yes. if you have been a kind of a believer that messes up comes to ask for ask for forgiveness you mess up forgive me ask you, this must stop this must stop praise the lord you might you, you you need to make up your mind that Lord, I want to obey you. This your your thing that has been happening is going to stop now. Praise the Lord. Why this is so important? Because this your your thing is costly. Yeah. Now it is in verse twenty-two and twenty-three of Numbers chapter fourteen. Not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt in the wilderness. But who disobeyed me and tested me. Ten times. God was even counting. God says ten times. <laughs> ten times. Between Egypt and the wilderness who were rebellious against me. None of them will ever see the land I promised on earth to their forefathers. Hallelujah. And then this is what uh, you need to understand. When you have seen the glory of God and His power, yeah. that increases obligation to obey. Yeah. You cannot be in the presence of the manifestation of the, of the Spirit of God, His anointing, His power, His glory, and then think that, you know, you can play the yo-yo thing. Yeah. Mess up, ask for forgiveness, mess up, ask for forgiveness. No, 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 no. You, you are mounting responsibility. The more you sit in the presence of God, the more you experience the power of the Holy Spirit, obligation is great. Yes. Hallelujah. That is why in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 48, the Bible says, but no one who does not know, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment, will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much will be asked. So The stakes are high. If you have seen the lame walking, if you have seen the power of the Holy Spirit working in your own life, if you have been... In other words, God is saying, to, listen guys, you saw the plagues I inflicted on the Egyptians. You saw me parting the Red Sea. I gave you manna, bread of angels falling from heaven. Even the, 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 the water gushed out of the rock. In the desert place, I, I gave you water. I've been, I've been leading you by the pillar of fire by night, the pillar of cloud by night. 
All of that is evidence of my awesomeness and my glory. Even Moses has been to Mount Sinai. You have seen his face shining with my glory. But you have the audacity to contend, to show contempt against my name. So God is saying, no, you are not entering. You have seen way too much. Says one of us, you have seen way too much for you to be disobedient. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now that is why don't be fooled by God saying, I forgive you. Yeah. Because that statement, I forgive you, also says you will not inherit what is due to you. Hallelujah. And then this is the context in the new covenant. <laughs> yeah, now this one is even more dreadful if you think of it. It says in Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 6, it is impossible for those who have seen the enlightenment, those who have been enlightened, who have tasted the holy gift, those who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. So in other words, there is a point where you experience the glory of God and literally, literally repentance becomes impossible. You, you reach a point of no return because you are disobedient in the midst of the glory. You are disobedient in the midst of God's power. And God says, listen, <laughs> you cannot be redeemed. You don't qualify for the land of promise. Praise the Lord. So that is why, Basalone, you cannot, you cannot play with grace. Because you do reach a point of no return. And this, this is unfortunately what a lot of grace preachers don't tell you. There are people who cannot repent because their hearts have been so hardened. In the sense that they were sitting in the presence of the Most High God. They were seeing glorious things in the presence of God. But they still insisted on disobedience. And then the Bible says to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again, subjecting him to public disgrace. And I pray in Jesus' name that in 2022, you are coming out of your disobedience. In Jesus' mighty name, praise the Lord. These repeated sins, repeated sins, we are coming out of them before our hearts can be hardened. Praise the Lord. Before we reach a point of no return, before we come to a place where it's impossible to repent, we are coming out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me close by talking about maturity to sonship. Sure. Which is what Mamunzit was also touching on in her prayer this morning. Amen. The issue of maturing to a place where you are trustworthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you see, people who are drifting in and out of sin, those people are untrustworthy. Yeah. No matter how skilled they are, yeah. no matter how talented you are, no matter how gifted you are, but if you are drifting in and out of sin, in and out of sin, you are very unreliable. Yeah. So that is why God wants to deal with this issue. In other words, when God is addressing this uh, rebellious crowd, they say, no guys, you've been doing this for too many years. You have been doing this. You, it, that's why I have to scatter you in the desert. Literally. And then uh, I want to read Galatians chapter 4. Verses 1 to 7. You can read as Mom Pashed Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. I want to talk about this whole thing of maturing into sonship. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, mm. although he owns the whole estate. Yeah. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set. By his father. Mm -hmm. So also, when we were underage, yes. we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces yes. of the world. Mm. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, mm. born under the law, mm. to redeem those under the law, mm. that we might receive adoption to sonship. Yes. Because you are his sons, God sent his spirit, the spirit of his son, into your heart. Mm. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave. Hallelujah. 
but God's child. Yes. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want, I want us to just look at this process of becoming an heir. Notice that uh, there was a time when they were under age. Yeah. That's the nation of Israel. Yeah. They were under age. So it appeared like the access to their inheritance was delayed. Now, during what appears like a delay, two things could be happening in that time period where we see what appears like a delay. It's either people are maturing into sanction or they are dying. This is important. When you are in your delay moment, you need to discern what process is taking place in you. Because it's either you are dying in your rebellion or you are maturing into sanction. And again, this all has to do with the disposition of your heart. And I can assure you that in that moment, when God is waiting for the fullness of time, yeah, fullness of time, just like in the desert, he had to, God had to wait for the fullness of time. Yeah. It's quite interesting that you, you have this nation of three million, three million plus people in the desert. Maybe to paint a picture that would make sense because this is a picture that doesn't make sense most of the time when we try to think through it. Yeah. The land of promise is just not far away, but here they are going around the same mountain. They, 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 they were living like nomadic shepherds, basically. It was like they were, they were wilderness people. And during that time, God is saying, I'm going to give them 40 years. Within these 40 years, there are two groups I'm dealing with. One, that is dying, the rebellious ones. Yeah. And two, there is another group that is maturing into sonship so that they are fit to take over the land of promise. Hallelujah. So whenever we are in this window period of waiting upon God, you can rest assured that some are dying and some are maturing. Now, this is critical. You need to decide which process is going to be taking place in your life. And you can't do both. You can't be maturing and dying at the same time. Praise the Lord. No, you can't do both. It's either you are maturing into sons or you are dying in your rebellion. Indeed, when they were on the verge of the river Jordan so that they could cross over to the other side, millions had died. Millions had died. Of those that left Egypt, Joshua and Caleb were found to be alive. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My prayer, my prayer is that you be the Caleb and the Joshua of our time. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May you be the Caleb and the Joshua of our time who will transition into the land of promise. The Bible says they were, they were limited by elemental spiritual forces of this world. In other words, this is the realm that could not break beyond. They were operating in the realm of basic principles. Eh? Even their progress was within the confined space of basic principles. And this does not define us. You are not supposed to be operating just within the realm of basic principles. Because you are supernatural. Praise the name of Jesus. Once again, you are peculiar. So when even in your business, even, even in your academics, I see students, welcome to all the students. Praise the name of Jesus. Even in the realm of your academics, even in the realm of your business, in the realm of your ministry, yes. Yes. refuse to just operate in the realm of basic principles. Yes. The Bible says they were bound by elemental forces of this world. Yes. They could not think beyond that. Yes. They could not see progress beyond that. They could not prosper beyond that. Yes. Now we are breaking those limitations in Jesus' name. But notice that we can only bring them by maturity into such. You are not breaking through this confinement without maturing. For you, for you to actually fly off this confinement, for you to shake yourself out of this confinement, 
you have to mature. In other words, you need to outgrow this space. Let me say that again. You need to outgrow the confinement of basic principles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, after you have broken into this space beyond elemental forces of this world, you come to a place of adoption as sons of God. Hallelujah. Now that's, that's maturation. Yeah. This refers to our salvation and growth towards the likeness of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when you have been adopted as son, as sons, now you are mature sons, you, you are growing in discipleship. Yeah. That is why, again, you cannot be telling me that you want to be a powerful businessman, you want to have a powerful ministry, but you don't attend discipleship classes. No. Hallelujah. You have no mentor, you have no one discipling you, but you have big dreams, huge dreams. Believe me, no matter how gifted you are, you will always operate within the realm of basic principles. Because it takes sonship, maturation, it takes growth in sonship for you to break into the other realm. Hallelujah. Adoption as sons. Now notice what has happened here. Once they have been adopted as sons, the Bible says you are no longer a slave. But now you are God's son. And since you are God's son, you are now an heir. Now that's how we inherit the Lord. So it's the process. We break forth from the confinement of basic natural principles. And then we move into adoption. And from adoption, from adoption as sons, we move to a place of inheritance. We are heirs. How was it for your inheritance here when you are not a mature son? Praise the Lord. So that is why your estate will remain with the, with the guidance that God has put. Ah. So the Canaanites were like guidance. Uh -huh. The Canaanites, they were like the executor of the estate. Up until someone had to do some growing up. And this defines a lot of believers. A lot of us have to do some growing up. Yes. That is why you have Muslims that are watching over your inheritance. Uh -huh. You have Sherba people watching over your inheritance. Non-believers, the Babylonian system is laying hold of your inheritance. Why? Because God is saying, can you please grow up? Just grow up. Hallelujah. And that's why you cannot be complaining, how come Muslims are prospering? How come non-believers are prospering? They are watching over your inheritance. These are Canaanites in the land, watching over the land. Praise the Lord, waiting for you to grow up in the wilderness. And I pray that you may do a good job. Praise the name of Jesus. We have no choice, beloved, except to grow up. Now, this is not just about material things. When we talk about your inheritance, we're not just talking about money, houses, and things. But we're also even talking about your eternal rewards. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eternal rewards. Hallelujah. In actual fact, in Matthew chapter 7, <laughs> now I want you to see how uncommon, uncommon blessings are. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate. Yes. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. Aha. You see, the, 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 the road to common things is broad. The gate to common things is wide. But the gate to, to, to uncommon things is small. The road that leads to uncommon things is narrow. But I pray that you may enter through the small gates. Oh, but I pray over Christ centered missions church. I pray over you, beloved. May you be among the uncommon. In Jesus' mighty name, I travail for you. In the name of Jesus, I cry out for you. In the name of Jesus, that you negotiate your way through the narrow. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do believe that many people are going to be shocked when they discover that entering the kingdom of God is not as easy as people think. 
We have lowered the standards. We have lowered the standards so much so that there are people who think they are heaven bound when they are not. Mamun Sebi articulated this very well. If you are not willing to endure in obedience, you will not experience this. No, no, no. This is not going to be a walk in the park was a lot. In, in actual fact, it is unbiblical to even preach that message. Because you are actually saying something that Jesus did not say. Jesus said, in this world you will have many troubles. But take heart, I've overcome the world. So we cannot deceive each other in saying, now that you are born again, things are just going to be smooth for you. Things will just come on your blood for you. No, this all one lovers are one. We fight here, beloved. There is warfare here. Sometimes to do what is right. To just to do what is right. I've shared my story with young people. <laughs> you know, when I was men, when I was at varsity, in my very first year at varsity, I remember coming as a young man, born again, and and and, and I met a girl. Don't worry, I've told my brother the story. <laughs> I met I met a girl. I've met I met a girl. It was during it was during an anatomy class. And in this anatomy class, this girl says, I want to teach you bones. We were, we were, we were studying human bones. And I was struggling with a few things. I, 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 and she says, I will teach you bones. I'm going to come to your room and I will teach you anatomy. I thought she was talking. But lo and behold, when I was in my room, I was still I was seeing in Florence Paul Hall, those who know you case at that my, my room was just in, 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 the, in, 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 in the first floor and I could see her coming. Oh. And she's carrying her bag. And this is in the evening. I said, huh? She's carrying her bag. I, this is gonna be a long anatomy class, you know? And I I locked my door. And she was knocking. Ba, 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 ba. When he saw open, open. And there I was wanting to open. And I'm thinking, oh, let me open, let me not open, let me open, let me not open. You know? And, and I just knew that things are going to change tonight. Everything is going to change. Whatever. The decision that I made tonight is going to be groundbreaking. I just knew that. And something says in me, open. Now, this had gotten to a place where even our resume. They had come assisting her. Hey, Vulumia, Moena, Vulumia, Indotanja, Indotanja, Vulumia, and I was just quietly sitting in my room. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. One voice says, Open. Another voice says, Don't you dare touch that door. And, uh, uh, and there was this, you know, uh, uh, decision. There was a struggle within my spirit. Open, do not open. Open, do not open. And I remember hearing the voice of my mother, SK, yes, yeah. saying, Final one. Uma Ogewa meet his such a final one. You will have to leave your medicine and take care of your child. Because I'm not going to take care of your child. I could hear that voice speaking into me. And I could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, You're a child of God, you're a child of God. Because I knew what was going to happen. She had her back. And those of us who were staying at rest knew what that meant. Yes. 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 So there was this constant struggle. But I praise God that I decided not to open. Yes. And I met him. <laughs> praise God. Now, the point that I want to make is this. While you are trying to obey God, there is going to be a pull to disobey you. There will always be a constant struggle. Paul speaks about this in Romans chapter 7. He says there is a war within me. There is part of me that wants to obey God. But there is another part of me that just wants to disobey and he says there's a clash, there's a combat 
There is a conflict within me. I'm torn between these two things. And this is a man of God confessing. I want you to please understand, when we talk about sonship, when we talk about a life of obedience, you need to embrace that there will always be that conflict. Says one more time, guy. But this is where the power of grace comes in. Says I'm afraid. You see, when Paul talks about this struggle in chapter seven, in chapter eight, he resolves this issue, and that is why you will never do justice. The others are going to be full of Ghana, but 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 chapter seven. But no Paul in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are enough struggles in there. Room for it. There are enough struggles. The man of God had a struggle, my brother, and we all struggle. No, no, no. Chapter seven is not a complete story. Praise the Lord. No, no, no. He says, let's let, let, deal with this issue. Let's deal with this issue. He acknowledges his struggle in chapter 7. But, but verse 25, maybe read it, my mom, but then chapter 7 of Romans, verse 25. It says, Thanks be to God mm. who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. So then, I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law. Aha! So now I can be a slave of righteousness. Amen. Even when I don't feel like doing something that is right, I can do it. Amen. Now, this is what the, 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 this is the message that I want to pass on to you, Pastor. There is a point where you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Amen. In the midst of temptation, you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. So that you are addicted yes. to righteousness. Yes. Uh, you, you see, the idea of slavery to sin yeah. means you were addicted to sin. Yeah. You could not but sin. Yeah. Sure. Sin was your nature. Yeah. That is why it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. But now that you are born again, the Holy Spirit wants to help you grow to a place where you will do right naturally. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You, you become addicted to obeying God. Yeah. That's slavery. That is slavery. Addiction. Yeah. You are addicted to do what the word of God instructs you to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even when your flesh is screaming. Because just like when you have addiction in the natural. Yeah. Your flesh will be, you, you will be screaming for that which you are addicted to. Yeah. But you can still say, Lord help me. In the name of Jesus. Because my spirit man is addicted to righteousness. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that my spirit man may override my natural man. This is where the Holy Spirit will help you. Praise the Lord. Just like I was struggling, standing next to the to that door. Open, do not open. Open to I had to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit at that time. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to just again emphasize the issue of addiction to righteousness. Romans chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Uh, let me read back. I think it's, uh, let me see. Uh, it's Romans chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. But thanks be to God. Though you used to be slaves to sin, but you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Yeah. Now, in the dispensation of grace, a lot of us don't want this terminology. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. This, 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 this terminology will instantly put you off. Yeah. Slaves? No, not me. And, and it's arrogant. Yeah. We're very arrogant. Mm -hmm. I'm still not just clear. I'm just clear as someone to me. Yeah. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the 